Welcome back guys, it is DIY time. Let's go ahead and get started. I have done my best to keep this video as short as possible, but with as much detail as possible. And if you don't know from the thumbnail, we are making the sandworm from Beetlejuice. My daughter happens to be in a wheelchair and I'm making her Beetlejuice this year. So of course I had to deck her all out with another cardboard costume. So I'm going to be using um, as much cardboard and like low cost things as possible. And so I'm just going to start out by breaking down some boxes into panels so that I can start cutting out what I need. Right now you see me cutting out kind of these U shapes. I didn't have a panel big enough, so I'm gonna glue two of them together. I'm just cutting out kind of a U shape with a flap. This is gonna be the smaller head of the sandworm. Excuse me. Um, this is going to end up being glued together. So I'm taking the one panel I already did and flipping it over to trace it. That way I know the panels um, are really symmetrical and are going to line up. And I'm making sure that that crease is going to end up in the middle of the face so that I can make sure that it kind of um, isn't flat, kind of like has an arch to it. So once I'm done with that and I like how it's lining up and the top half is good, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the bottom half. So I have the top and the bottom of the jaw. Once all of those are of a good size and cut out, I'm just using some old kitchen scissors, but I did end up further in the video buying some cardboard cutters because I have scars on my hands and they were really hurting to try to get that those scissors through that cardboard. Anyway, I am just gluing these together. I'm kind of lining them up where I think they need to be and then adding glue just in the sections where the cardboard touches each other. And then I am pushing them down, patting them all over to make sure the cardboard um sticks in all areas and then you can kind of see me like bending it as it's drying to kind of force it to make sure I can still move it a little bit after the glue has dried completely. You see I got a little crazy and moved it too much. Once I got it into place I went ahead and glued it back down. So I'm just going to push it here and then those little flaps that I left out those are for the back of the jaw. The actual like jaw bones where they would connect. That way I can connect the two pieces together. So I'm just going to add some um, glue and then glue those flaps together. And then this time whenever I fold it over you're going to kind of see the head coming into shape here. I'm just going to glue those flaps together as well. And then I'm going to um, end up putting a small brace on the back of it. Also, I'm using an industrial glue gun. I'll put that down in my affiliate links. Just be very careful. It gets very, very hot, but it's amazing. All right, here I just cut down um, a piece of cardboard and I am folding the edges to be able to glue it in. I made it slightly shorter than the actual um, back of this. That way, when I glue it, it'll kind of force and pinch it together to where I get that small arch in the top part of the head. So I'm just going to glue down, like I said, I just had a strip of cardboard, folded the flaps and inserted those into the inside of the head and just held those there until they were dry. Now you can see that we kind of have like a head shape and this is the smaller of the two heads. Now I'm going based off of my daughter's wheelchair and the tray that attaches to her wheelchair. Our dimensions will not be the same because whatever you're using is going to be different, whether you're using it to like wrap around your body or put it on a chair or an adaptive bike, whatever it is. So I'm just showing you how I made it. The measurements are up to you. Here I'm showing you, I don't even know if you could see, I have pretty bad scars from being attacked by a dog this summer and I just don't have the grip strength to do the cardboard cutting like in the past. So I just went and bought this little tool from Menards and I just set the smaller head on top of it and then traced an outline larger than the small head. I think I did several inches on each side. And then I'm just going to kind of set it up here, make sure I did make it big enough, and then making it symmetrical. I'm folding it in half just to cut it down and make sure that both sides end up looking very similar. Now, if you notice on this piece, I did forget that little flap for the jaw. That's okay. I'm just going to add cardboard later to be able to adhere it and make it look the way it needs to. But when you do it, it would be a lot easier if you remember the first time. So as you can see, I have the panel here and then the, the flaps on the box, like where it would close, I left those on there and I did that on purpose because I'm going to use those to kind of bend and glue the two pieces together to give a really good shape. 
now that I'm happy with the first panel, I am making the second one and I am actually adding on those little jaw flaps as you could see. And I'm just gonna use this little tool and cut. Again, I will let you know in the description what this tool is. Um, I'll find either this exact one or something very similar on my Amazon affiliates so that you can have access to it too. I found this at Menards. I don't know if you have a Menards in your area, but I'm sure your local hardware store will have one. I'm just going to finish cutting this out and then we will start assembling. So I'm just gonna kind of play around with it here, clean up the edges. I will say this works good on curves. You kind of have to force it a little, but it doesn't do good on big angles. So I just have my scissors and a box cutter nearby for any sharp angles or small sections I need to cut out, but it worked great and it saved my hand a lot of trouble. All right, I'm just kind of playing around here, seeing how I want everything to kind of line up. And I'm going to start with those back flaps to kind of give that um, shape that I'm looking for because this is like a big worm. It's supposed to be round, but we're playing with cardboard here. We're going to do what we can. I am just going to um, put glue onto those flaps, push it down until it is dry and holding shape. And that will either, I think this will end up being the top of the jaw or sorry, of the head of the larger head. Again, if you don't know what this looks like, go look Google the Beetlejuice sandworm and it'll all make sense. Anyway, I'm going to do the same for the bottom. I'm just marking with a pencil the area that needs glue so I don't waste glue or get glue like in places I don't need it to. One, to prevent some burns from happening and two, to prevent kind of a messy look. Once that's good, I'm going to see how they line up and I'm putting my smaller head inside to make sure it fits before I glue this down because if I needed to make it wider this would be the time to do it. So I'm just going to kind of trace the outline where the glue goes again and I'm going to hot glue down and then I'm going to work on the jaw and I'll kind of show you in this video how I compensate for forgetting those flaps on the one side. So here you see me just kind of I'm making sure I press down on the entire surface because this needs to hold together and not fall apart as soon as I put it on her tray. Now I'm going to start working on putting these flaps up and I'm just going to cut away any of the excess cardboard that I don't need because there are just like certain angles and stuff that will make it hard to fold. So I'm just going to work my way around here and then I'm also cutting this kind of like at an angle um, you know, like if you think about the side of your lip when you open your mouth, it's not straight. It has like a curve to it. That's what I'm doing here is I'm just creating that curve and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to glue it down. And this ended up working out pretty good. And then on one side, I did have to add a little more cardboard, but again, I'll show you exactly how I did that. After I glued both of the jaw sides on, um, I haven't added that extra piece yet, I'm gonna go ahead and brace this mouth. So what I'm doing here is making another brace out of cardboard folding flaps so I have something to attach it to. And I am going to put this in the back of the mouth to make sure that it stays as open as I need it to and doesn't collapse down on itself. Now I'm gluing it one to two inches from the very back of the mouth um, because if I put it on the very back wall, it's not gonna do anything that the back wall's not already doing. So I just moved it forward slightly that way. It just gives it a little extra support so I know that it's not gonna collapse down on itself because I want it to be open so that the smaller head fits in. And then you see here that I'm adding on more, like there's a big gap on where the jaw will be. I'm just adding on more cardboard um, to where that needs to go. And this isn't a big deal because of how I'm going to do the mouth. Most of this will be hidden and you won't see how choppy it is or that I messed up. Or you will because I just showed you. But anyway, off camera, I did spray the inside of both of the heads, the small and the big one, with some Rust-Oleum black spray paint. I just didn't feel like getting in there with the brush. Um, and you could probably go ahead and spray paint the outsides white as well. But you'll just need to cover up the inside with some paper or something. Um, I didn't worry about it. I was just going to brush it on. And I'm just using some white acrylic paint here. There's nothing special about it. But I am just making sure that I get in. I'm doing a really thick coat. I'm getting into all of those crevices of the cardboard. And I'm also making sure um, that I do that thick coat because it's going to ab start absorbing into the con concrete. Whoa. Into the cardboard a little bit. Um, so that I'll keep it from being too spotty. Just don't overdo it so that you don't saturate the cardboard and make it too um, flimsy, if that makes sense. So I did this on both of the heads, the top, the bottom, um, I, don't, I didn't do it on the back because we're going to add stuff to the back later. But yes, the top, the bottom, and the sides of both of the heads. Now I'm just 
going to move forward and specify that this is the larger head that we're still working on here. And we are going to go ahead and do, I guess it's not the neck part because a worm or snake doesn't really have a neck, but like the, where the body meets the head. I'm going to be using two separate flaps of cardboard here, and I am going to be gluing those on to the back. I am cutting the second piece here. So the first piece I've already glued down on half of the head. The second piece here, I'm cutting this at an angle so that whenever I glue it down at an angle, the two flaps that are underneath meeting where I'm gluing it, they're not overlapping and keeping a gap between the head and the second piece of cardboard. So I hope that makes sense. I'm choosing to use two panels, mostly because I didn't have a panel big enough to make one solid piece. I only had the one big box and I already used that for the top and the bottom of the head. So I'm just makeshifting here, cutting away the parts that I don't need and then gluing it on. And then you see here, I'm cutting away this little piece of cardboard because I'm gonna fold this down. So once I get it folded down, I'm going to um, glue that flap and this is where it's going to sit on my daughter's tray. So it's kind of only the half, the as tall as the head of the, um, sorry, the head of the first, the biggest um, worm, because I'm going to kind of fold, you see me cutting in an angle here, I'm going to kind of fold it down. I want it to look like it's coming out of her tray. So I need it to be on an angle so that when I set it onto the tray, it looks like it's coming out of it if that makes sense. I hope it does. Sometimes my brain and my mouth can't get on the same page. Anyway, um, so I cut at an angle here and now I'm just gluing these down into place. So I'm going to do the first side and that goes a little bit easier. The second side I have to kind of force um, a little bit where the two meet in the middle at the top. You can see me kind of like pressing it down because I'm going to need to glue those together. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this flap down to make sure it's nice and secure. And then from there, I glued the two flaps together and then I did secure it with a little bit of duct tape because I wasn't completely like half or I guess completely confident that it was going to hold because that glue was taking forever to dry. So I just taped it down and it worked out great. Now I'm using some pipe insulators. You can use some small um, pool noodles. I couldn't find any. I usually go to like Dollar Tree. They have the really thin ones. They did not have any out. So I went ahead and just got these from my local hardware store. They're like little pipe insulators or covers. I should have switched to my other glue gun, not my industrial glue gun because it started to melt the foam, but I didn't feel like waiting for my other one to heat up. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this. I'm going to tell you if you have a um, heat gun, use it on low or use a less powerful one. That way it doesn't melt the foam. But all I did was pull it apart. Like it's not glued together or anything, but you do have to kind of pull the foam apart. And then I'm just putting glue down onto the cardboard and then going back and putting glue on the actual lip of the foam to make sure it's nice and secure. And I'm just going to wrap this around the entire edge of the face. This is going to emulate their kind of like thicker lips. The um, sandworm has kind of like thick, bumpy, I don't know, like lips going on. And so I'm going to use this to kind of um, make that kind of, that shape and that kind of happen. You can use a thicker pool noodle, I guess, but I think the proportions might be off. So I like this thinner one that I have found. I'm pretty sure I got this pack of foam for like five dollars so I only needed one pack it's a pack of four and it worked perfect for what I was doing I only did this for the big head for the small head I'll show you how I made the lips um, more 3d on that one because this was way too big for the second head once I'm getting this done, I made sure to wrap one full one around the front so that the creases are like you know the two places where they meet up are not in the front of the mouth but I just cut down the foam to wherever I needed it to and makeshifted it onto the mouth. Here you see I made a slit in both ends so that I could kind of manipulate it around. And then I cut off the edges to kind of make it more at an angle. And this doesn't have to be super pretty because I am going to cover it with some um, foam paper or like, is that what you call like a little foam paneling? You'll see here in a minute. So anyway, I did this around the entire top mouth and those like jaw areas. And that's why I wasn't so worried about that cardboard earlier when I had to kind of like makeshift a piece on. All you're going to do is cut away any of the areas you don't need and then you are good for your lips. Next thing I need to do is go ahead and paint on the stripes. The big head of this um, sandworm has white and black stripes. So 
So I did my white for the base and now I went ahead and took a um, just a ruler and measured out some stripes and drew my lines. That way I knew they'd be nice and straight. I made them a little thinner towards the nose or to the front of the head and got made them a little thicker and farther apart as it went back because that's kind of that's what it looks like it is to me um, from the pictures of the still shot of the movie. So I just did that and I'm again just using some black acrylic paint. And then you also want to make sure you have those stripes go down the side anywhere that they would need to go. Just going to paint these on and then I'm going to let that dry. After that, I went ahead and drew out and cut out a fin for the top. This um, sandworm has kind of like a floppy fin at the top. It's long and skinny. So I just drew something that I thought um, met the proportion of the head. And then you're going to need a flap on either side so that you can hot glue it to the top. So I just painted that with that same black acrylic paint. And then I'm going to be gluing this on. Now you will see on the front of the fin, like where you cut it, the inside of the cardboard where it's brown. I didn't do it on camera, but I did take a small brush and I just kind of did a circle inside of each one of those little gaps there so that it turned black and you couldn't see it um all of that brown near as well so that's all I did was like I said with a small brush and just did circles inside of there until I colored or painted all of that cardboard this is that foam panel I'm talking about foam paper I don't know um it's the size of what a like legal paper would be so not a typical not the eight and a half by eleven but I think it's eight and a half by fourteen maybe or 17, I don't know, whatever size legal paper is. I bought five panels of that um, and I cut some of them in half. So for the big worm, I cut them in half. I don't remember how many sheets I used. I think three, three and a half maybe. And I am just going to be wrapping this around the foam. I, you see, I switched my heat gun, not my heat gun, sorry, my glue gun. And I am just gluing this down around the foam. So I'm putting one stripe of glue holding it, making sure it's on there, and then I'm going and doing the bottom half and just pulling that around. And I'm not too worried about any creases or wrinkles. I'm actually going to start putting some in on purpose because the worm kind of has like bumpy, wrinkly lips. We just want to kind of crease them a little bit to make them have some good dimension. So once I get to this part, I'm going to start purposely folding and creasing the foam panel. And I'm I don't think I showed on here, but make sure you overlap your two pieces. Once you are at an angle, you might need to leave a little more than what you think. Um, and I even folded like the ends where, where the end will cover up and meet the second panel. I folded the um, foam piece over, kind of rolled it over itself and glued it down so that it would have even more of a lip to it. And I know I show this in a picture in a little bit and I'll, I'll explain it more there too. But you see, as I'm going here, I'm purposely folding it and giving it a wrinkle. I'm just gluing that wrinkle down to itself so that it has a nice good fold. And this is going to give the lips a really good texture. Again, if you look at a picture of the sandworm, it has kind of like bumpy, um, I don't know, like weird lips. <laughs> I'm just trying to emulate that here. And I'm just going to keep going around and hot gluing this down over and over again doing the wrinkles I know I'm repeating myself but this part's so important because you don't want them to be flat you want them to have that texture you want them to have some dimension to them and on top of this there's another way that I'm going to add to this to try to give it more dimension so here you can see I wrapped the entire thing just using those foam pieces and then in this picture you can see right here that's where I was talking about like I kind of rolled the edges so that it gave it a little bit more to look at now this is the smaller head. I'm using that same foam panel, but I am gluing it down. So I'm gluing it down upside down. Whatever side you want to show first, glue that, that side down, um, facing down onto the mouth. And then you're going to pull it down and around into the mouth. And what that's going to do is create that lip and give it a 3D effect instead of it just laying flat on its face. So you can see I'm gluing here right now. I'm working on the top of the mouth. Um, this is kind of going fast, but I glue the back side, or sorry, the front side lip down, and then I pull it around itself after it's dry and glue it down inside the mouth. And this is just giving a nice cushiony lip. That way, it still has that 3D effect to it, but I didn't ha like have a smaller foam to be able to um, make them any thicker. So this was kind of my way of making up for it, but I think it was perfect. I think it worked out really well. 
Once I was done with that, I wanted to add a little more dimension to both lips. So I used a teal, a blue, and a little bit of yellow to make a slightly darker tint of that same color of the lips to paint in to all of those creases. What I'm doing here, it's really hard to see on camera right now, um, but it's just slightly different and I'm just adding lines. I'm painting in all the creases. I'm kind of doing like little U's or like horseshoes um, in different directions all over the lips. And that's gonna kind of, um, like I said, emulate those creases of his mouth as well. Um, for any of the areas that might be a little too flat or a little too smooth, it's gonna kind of break that up for me and look a little bit a little bit better and give more dimension. So I just did that on both the small and the large head. You can kind of see here those lines after they dried showing up just a little bit. Then we're gonna move on and we're gonna add eyes to the large head. So these are just some half sphere um, little star foam things that I picked up from my local craft store. And I'm using a piece of red foam panel here. I'm just going to cut down um, a size that is slightly larger than each of them. And then I'm going to be hot gluing them on. Now I will say sorry, I didn't realize that I ran out of um, space on my phone. So it kind of cut out on me here. But I'm just adding glue down and then pushing this panel around and kind of wrapping it and holding it into place until it dried. And then after that, I glued down all of those extra little flaps that you see there and just glued them to the back. I lost the footage of that, so I do apologize. After that, I'm going to put some hot glue on there and place them onto the worm where I see fits most um, or like looks the best. And then I'm going to use some white foam paneling and I'm going to wrap that around the eyes. So as you can see here, they're kind of just like floating on his head. Look a little bit out of place. You can really see how messy the edges of those are. The point of the white paneling is to kind of hide that and kind of like make them mesh well and give... Um, I guess it would be technically his eyelids um, to wrap around. So all I did was cut strips of that white and then I folded it in half um, to kind of make it to where you couldn't see the edge. So I had a nice um, smooth edge. I cut it down like after I wrapped it around, I cut it down to the size I needed and then I just hot glued it in place. And you can see it makes it way more seamless and looks so much better than the other one that does not have it. And since we're working on the eyes, we're going to jump over to the smaller guy here. I'm using my duct tape roll because it's slightly bigger than the circle that I need for the eyes. And I'm just using a piece, um, you can use poster board, that's essentially what this is, but I'm just using some scrap from scrapbook paper, like the actual um, like booklet it comes in. And I'm just tracing around that and cutting it out. And then I'm cutting a slit halfway through the circle so that I can overlap the pieces and make it more into a cone shape. So you see here, I'm just kind of coning it and putting it down to the size that I need for the sandworm. I am adding some duct tape to the back of it just so I can um, make sure that they're both the exact same size that I need. And then I'm just hot gluing that lip down to make sure that it's nice and secure. Once I'm done with that, I am going to need to paint them up. And I'm just going to be using, I think it's called King's Gold, but kind of like a goldish yellow because his eyes are more of a gold yellow rather than a bright yellow. And I'm just going to paint both of the circles. I ended up doing two coats of this. Again, this is just acrylic paint, nothing special. After that, I mixed up a kind of orangish reddish color. I used that same um, golden yellow with some red to paint in like his actual eyeball kind of more pupilish I guess or his iris that's what I'm looking for what are the words um so I just kind of painted the circles on tried to make them as even as possible and then when they dried I took a detailed brush and I painted a black outline around it so that it would kind of like make it pop off a little bit more and then I'm going to paint the pupils on. Now, I could have just done that here, but I wanted to make sure I had them in the right spot and I want them to be more for, like forward facing. So I went ahead and laid them on the face like they would be when I glued them down so I know exactly where to paint the pupils. So I just painted those on again with a small detail brush and then let it dry so that we can glue them down to the head. So I'm just going to put glue on the ed edges here of this being very careful because I have burnt myself several times already throughout this video. Um, and so I'm just going to do it on the edges. And then just like before, we're going to be using little pieces of that white foam to create some eyelids here. So I'm just going to cut out strips. 
I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and then fold it in half over itself because I don't think I showed you <laughs> it the last time. So I'm just going to do that um, to make enough strips to be able to do this here. But instead of going around the eye and making it a circle, I'm going to be putting it um, more like the shape of our eyes, like a human eye. Um, he has more of like an eye with an angle and his eyes are not round. So I'm just going to build this out and glue this down into the shape that I want it to be. And I'm just hot gluing it into place. And then I am also going to be adding in like an extra crease on his eyelid because he kind of has like a several creases in his eyelid. And I didn't really know how to make that happen <laughs> without just folding up this foam the way that I'm doing here. So I'm just taking my time, making sure it fits well, hot gluing it down, and then kind of played around with what I want that second eyelid to work. So this is kind of your creative part do how you want I made mine slightly shorter than the top um than like the top one that's already down there and then I just glued it on next to it and I'm a little off screen I'm so sorry I do that several times throughout here because I just get so caught up into actually creating it I forget about the camera sometimes anyway I just hot glued that down and then to give it the actual shape I am going ahead and taking that same color yellow like that golden yellow and I am painting those um like the inside of where those foam pieces meet up and now you can see the shape coming alive and you can see how big of a difference it makes when they're side by side. So after I finished that it's time to add on his little spots. His spots are not cir circular they're kind of messy and all over so I'm, they're more like blobs. I'm taking that same color that I mixed up for the eyes and I'm just kind of making some blobs. I'm starting out with bigger ones towards the front of his face and kind of in the center of his face. And then as I get back towards the eyes and the outs, like the outsides of his face, they get a little smaller. Um, you can see here, I'm just mixing up more of that color because I ran out and I'm just going to just keep going. And it's so random. Try really hard to be as random as possible don't think about it because if you think about it too much you'll end up with symmetrical little dots and that's not what it is so you can just kind of tap your brush around just kind of roll it around and it'll end up making good shapes and next we need to make him look a little less friendly i feel like right now you could pet him he feels like a friend and we do not want him to be a friend right now so we're gonna cut down the rest of that red foam left from the eyes on the bigger sandworm and we're going to cut them into strips and this is going to be the gums of his he has very big crazy gums and we are going to make those so all i'm doing is cutting those strips in wavy patterns very very um like you don't want to in, in a pattern i guess you want to make it very sporadic some wider some deeper some taller um and then we're going to use those to glue on the inside to make sure that our teeth have something to stick to. I ended up painting them. I skipped showing you because it didn't make any difference. They were the same color by the time I was done. So we're gonna move on to the teeth. I'm just using that same panel of white foam. I am cutting it to the width. The width that I'm cutting it off is the height that I want the teeth to be. And I'm just going to cut triangles out. I'm making sure that these are very sporadic. I want them to be similar heights, but I want them to be different thicknesses. I want them to have some raggedy edges. I want them to just kind of look really gnarly. And then as I glue them in, I can control that too, a little bit more too. I am going to put glue on the edges and bottom of these foam pieces here. And I'm going to be gluing them to the inside of the lip and the bottom of the bottom and or top, depending on which side you're doing, of the jaw. So I want to make sure it's attaching to the actual cardboard, not just the lip um, foam part. I'm just going to do this over and over for the front, uh, or sorry, for the top and the bottom of it. And wherever it meets up, like the two pieces where they meet up, I'm going to snip it to where it it's like, what are my words? A little more seamless to where, you know, the arch of wherever the gum placement is. That way they line up and it's a little less noticeable that they're different panels. I'm just going to keep gluing these down and then we can add in our teeth. For the teeth, I am going to just be adding glue to the larger end of the tooth and then putting it behind the gum and I'm just gluing these straight to the gum and I'm just doing it at different heights. So some of them I'm putting a little higher into the mouth, some a little lower so that they're different heights and then my different cuts are what's giving it that kind of like gnarly look. 
um, and you can do the kind of slightly at an angle, kind of whatever you need to do, and you can see it looks really, really awesome. So I just did that for the top and the bottom of the jaw, and then I am going to be making a tongue. I am just rolling one of those white foam pieces into a cone shape and just hot gluing it down. And then I'm going to start kind of folding it in half from there. So I'm putting some hot glue and kind of folding it in half. What this is doing is, one, making it thinner because it is, needs to be thinner. But two, it's messy. It's kind of going to make it um, be a little, like have little angles and a little jaunty, I guess, um, because the tongue kind of like wiggles out. And looks really gross. So I'm just folding it in different areas until I'm happy and then I'm going to paint on some stripes. Now again, I'm so focused on the project I forget about the camera. I am very sorry about that because I am off frame but you can see here it looks pretty cool. The stripes get thicker as they go to the back of the tongue and I'm just going to put it through the back of the head here making sure it's sticking out slightly past those teeth and I'm just going to hot glue it down in place. And you can see it looks really good. Just barely peeking out, letting you know it's there without being a little, like too, too extra. <laughs> Next, I am doing the teeth for the, the larger head. And those teeth are a lot more symmetrical, but they have black and white stripes on them. So I went ahead and cut out um, some triangles that are mostly symmetrical. And I am painting those lines on. I'm sure you could have painted the lines on one panel first and then cut them. Um, why I didn't do that, couldn't tell you. Uh, I guess I felt like I had more control on them being straight if my cuts were a little off. But do whatever you please. It'll save you time if you paint the panel and then cut it down. After that, we need to attach the head. Now, I did not film this part. I created three panels to do the body of the um, smaller head. Again, I ran out of um, storage again, so it didn't get filmed, but I just did the two side panels of the body here of this white one. I glued them onto it and I made sure that they were long enough to where they could glue them to the back of the big head, but still be long enough for that head to peek out the front because you want that the body and the head of that kind of coming out as if it's coming out to get you. Um, so after I got that in there, I did the third panel. I had painted all these white. Once I got it secured in there and glued in there, I put that third panel over top to close off the body so you couldn't see um, that it was just disjointed pan panels. And then once I got it secured in there, I also glued the front part where it sits on the lip of the larger um, head. I glued that down too, just so it's not just wiggling free in there because I was scared if it starts to wiggle, it'll just pop out. Once that's done, I'm starting to add the teeth to the big head in there. You wanted to do this sec, sec oh my goodness, second, because you don't know where your head's going to sit. So you don't want to put teeth in the way to where you can't get it in there to where you need it to be or to where you're like making the teeth go crooked and look weird. So I did the teeth second. So I'm just gluing them again to the top actual cardboard of the head so that they're back kind of behind the lip like they should be. And then I'm just putting them on the top and on the bottom where they fit well. Um, like I said, they're not going to go everywhere because that head's kind of coming out and blocking parts of it. I think it ended up looking really good. And then all I had to do was attach it to my daughter's chair. Now, again, she has a removable tray. I'm setting this on top of it. I wired it down and then I'm also using some bungee cords to make it stay up um, and kind of shift the weight back so that it um, stays up and isn't dragging on the ground. And I'm using burlap. I'm just hot gluing it down here to cover the back of it so it looks like it's coming up out of the sand and to hide the wires and the bungee cords. I love how this turned out um, considering it was cardboard. If you do too, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and good luck if you're going to make this for someone you love. Here she is. I my daughter, I don't want her to always be the little girl in the wheelchair. I want her to be the coolest kid on the block with the coolest, dopest costume. And I'm hoping that we pulled this off again. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit me with your favorite Halloween emoji. And I will see you guys next time.